طيب ان شاء الله we'll be reciting from Surah Yusuf verse 36 Surah Yusuf verse 36 Surah Yusuf verse 36 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ودخل معه السجن فتياد قال أحدهما إني أراني أعصر خمرا وقال الآخر إني أراني أحمل فوق رأسي خبزا تأكل الطير منه نبئنا بتأويله إنا نراك من المحسنين قال لا يأتيكما تعام ترزقانه إلا نبأتكما بتأويله قبل أن يأتيكما ذلكما مما علمني ربي إني تركت ملة قوم لا يؤمنون بالله وهم بالآخرة هم كافرون واتبعت ملة آبائي إبراهيم وإسحاق ويعقوب ما كان لنا أن نشرك بالله من شيء ذلك من فضل الله علينا وعلى الناس ولكن ولكن أكثر الناس لا يشكرون يا صاحبي السجن أرباب متفرقون خير أم الله الواحد القهار ما تعبدون من دونه إلا أسماء سميتموها إلا أسماء سميتموها أنتم وآباؤكم ما أنزل الله بها من سلطان إن الحكم إلا لله أمر أن لا تعبدوا إلا إياه ذلك الدين القيم ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون يا صاحبي السجن أما أحدكما فيسقي ربه خمرا وأما الآخر فيسلب فتأكل الطير من رأسه وأما الآخر فيسلب فتأكل الطير من رأسه قضي الأمر الذي فيه تستفتيان وقال للذي ظن أنه ناج منه مذكرني عند ربك فأنساه الشيطان ذكر ربه فلبث في السجن بضع سنين وقال الملك إني أرى سبع بقرات سمان يأكلهن سبع عجاف وسبع سنبلات خضر وأخر يابسات يا أيها الملأ أفتوني في رؤياي إن كنتم أفتوني في رؤياي إن كنتم للرؤيا تعبرون قالوا أضغاث أحلام وما نحن بتأويل الأحلام بعالمين وقال الذي نجا منهما والدكر بعد أمة أنا أنبئكم بتأويلي فأرسلون يوسف أيها الصديق أفتنا في سبع بقرات سمان يأكلهن سبع عجاف يأكلهن سبع عجاف وسبع سنبلات خضر وأخر يابسات لعلي أرجع إلى الناس لعلهم يعلمون قال تزرعون سبع سنين دأبا فما حصدتم فذروه في سنبله إلا قليلا مما تأكلون ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك سبع شداد يأكلن ما قدمتم لهن إلا يأكلن ما قدمتم لهن إلا قليلا مما تحسنون 
ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك عام فيه يغاث الناس وفيه يعصرون وقال الملك اتوني به فلما جاءه الرسول قال ارجع إلى ربك فاسألوا ما بال النسوة التي قطعن أيديهن إن ربي بكيدهن عليم قال ما خطبكن إذ راوتن يوسف عن نفسه قلنا حاش لله ما علمنا عليه من سوء قالت امرأة العزيز الآن حصحص الحق أنا راوته عن نفسه وإنه لمن الصادقين ذلك ليعلم أني لم أخنه بالغيب وأن الله لا يهدي كيد الخائنين So this course is course on dream interpretation and mainly we, wanna, uh, we want you to do this course is because a lot of us see dreams and some of these dreams are meaningful and it can uh, impact your life in a uh, empowering manner and also in drastic manner and some of the, these dreams are glad tidings and some of these dreams are warning and some of these dreams are simply what one is thinking within their hearts and minds like every science alhamdulillah rabbil alamin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left this knowledge with the experts and he teaches the experts uh, like every science, those who put effort therein to study, they are taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are taught by the relevant experts who came before them. And the main reason of us teaching this science is because there are people out there who actually interpret it, interpret people's dreams either for free or either through charging and uh, sadly uh, not obviously all of them but some of them are not experts and they can have a detrimental uh, impact on the individual or individuals whom they are interpreting the dream and thereby we saw that it was vital for us to uh, give some basic guidelines of interpreting the dreams and also understanding uh, the basic boundaries and also the instructions and also the science of this uh, subject. So that one is has insight so one that so that one has insight therein and they do not make major mistakes either in interpreting or either going to the wrong interpreters. So firstly, uh, we all see dreams or dreams are realities agreed upon by everyone, Muslims and non-Muslims alike. It's consensus amongst human beings, we see dreams. These dreams from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, point of view or his, the reason of his wisdom for giving us these dreams to mankind as a whole is glad tidings. Is glad tidings is to give us glad tidings that is the original general 
wisdom behind wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the realm of the dreams. Now this mindset or this understanding this objective is crucial. Why? Because when one doesn't know the interpretation of the dream, when one is not uh, when, when the expert doesn't know or you yourself doesn't know any expert you can take it as a glad tiding you can take it as glad tiding you can fall back to the general wisdom why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place gave those dreams especially if they are not scary frightening dreams how if they are frightening and scary dreams then you can simply take them as they are from shaitan and do isti'adha, a'udhu billahi from shaitan al-rajim and forget about it and move on. So any good dreams that you see, it's not scary, it's not frightening. You can take it as a glad turning if you do not know the interpretation or you, don't, you do not know any expert to ask the interpretation. You can take it as a glad turning. So that's the original principle when it comes to dreams that you see. As long as it's not scary, it's not frightening, then they are taken as glad tidings. Also, prophethood. Prophethood in of itself is the greatest glad tiding. Prophethood in of itself is the greatest glad tiding. And the greatest glad tiding began with what? True dreams. Yeah. And from those parts of prophethood, the true dream still continues to exist within the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu yeah, and it will exist all the way until Qiyamah Day. So the greatest glad tiding is what? Prophethood. Within the parts and portions of prophethood, what was left, i.e. what was given to the prophets, that's continued to be given to us from the prophethood, but obviously there will be no other prophet after Muhammad Wasallam. So what was given to them will be given to us. Only a portion. And that one portion is true dreams. Now, one of the narrations she says regarding true dreams Ru'ya Saliha. So the Ru'ya Saliha negates any frightening and scary dream. So the word Salih, which is Ru'ya, which is Ru'ya, which is contentment. It gives you contentment, it gives you peace, it gives you security, it gives you safety, it gives you serenity. Yeah? This is the word, word Salih includes all of this. Encourages, encourages towards uprightness, righteousness, piousness, piety, yeah, and so on. So basically, it's negating what? Negating anything scary and frightening. Yeah. As long as that is not there, they are, they are generally included within Salih. Within the word Salih. So Ru'ya Saliha is affirmed 
In the hadith also, ru'ya sadiqa, truthful. Truthful, again embeds salih, but embeds something a bit more specific. Which is that it will not come in a complex way. The dream will not be complex. It will be vivid, it will be clear, it will be explicit, and it will be according to the reality of matters. Reality of the context of the individual. It will not be complex. And then you have the third sort of definition, Bushra, glad tiding, the word Bushra. Within the category of Bushra, Saliha included the word the Salih. Righteous upright encouragement is included, sadiq is included. However, in Bushra, what is included a bit more is dreams which are complex. Dreams which are complex. It needs experts to interpret. Then you have last one in Dar warning. Warning ones can be scary, can be frightening, but they will have elements of righteousness therein. They will have elements of true realities therein. They will have elements of glad tidings also. However, they will be scary. They will be frightening. Now, how do you distinguish between a dream which is shaitanic and a dream which is a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is that the shaitanic dream will physically have shaitan therein? physically see or feel the presence of a shaitan or a jinn. And it will be scary from get-go, from beginning to end. It will be frightening from the get-go, from beginning to end. Also it will be random. It will be sporadic and random. The images and symbols, it will move, it will transform and change in a random manner. There will be no pattern therein. As for if it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then as I said, there will be salih there, there will be some parts which are salih, which are righteous, some parts which is glad tiding, some parts, elements of it, which is scary, but they will not be like a jinn there or shaitan there trying to scare you, frighten you from the get-go. And it will be vivid and explicit. And there will be a pattern therein. There will be a like chronological order. It will not be random. It will not move from one thing to another in a random manner. Why? Because whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, He does with wisdom. Right? There's a pattern, there's a system in place. If shaitan does, He does things randomly. There's no wisdom behind it. He comes and goes. Yeah? You tell pen and paper, or you take notes. Take notes. I'm giving key knowledge here, distinguish between a indar and a shaitanic dream. 
you, you have to be able to distinguish. If you don't note it down, you will not be able to distinguish. You need to note it down. Okay, shaitan is random. He comes in dreams random. There's no pattern to it. There's no system to it. When comes Allah subhanahu wa dream of warning, there's pattern to it. There's a system in place. Yeah? Kamrul asked to someone to get me a green tea. Someone gave me green tea. Questions at the end, please. Not the questions are not for the end. I've got a lot to cover. Tayyip. So, as soon as you see a dream, you need to put this dream into these categories. He's in the category of Salih. He's in the category of Sadiq. He's in the category of Bushra. Or he's in the category of in dar. Then it becomes easier than to interpret dream, either yourself or either an expert. As for hadith and nafs and the shaitanic dream, I'll leave that for a side. Just true dreams from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you can easily categorize them. Is this dream the true dream is this in the category of Salih and Sadiq? You can both you can make them in one category if you want. But the only difference as I said Salih, it's more general. Sadiq is more specific. Sadiq is more vivid, clear, is it goes with the reality. It's not complex. It's not a complex dream. For example, you see you're going to the masjid, you're praying your salah, you see yourself reciting the Quran, and you do that in reality. So it came as, a, according to your reality, the dream came. Yeah? The only difference was, for example, you're going to Salah and you're, you're being elevated. You're leading, us, leading the Salah and you see yourself leading in Mecca, for example. Yeah. So it's just a vivid, clear, sadiq dream, meaning you pray your Salah, you do your recitation, and this is what you're seeing. So the interpretation of that is what? Simple interpretation, which is that continue what you're doing of your salawat, be thabit on it, and most importantly, it is being accepted. That's the interpretation. Yeah. So elevation means acceptation. If you see the masjid change from a small masjid to a bigger masjid, for example, your masjid is this masjid. You see a bigger masjid like Islamic masjid or like Haram or Medina, or any bigger accepted masjid with the Muslim community, bigger than your local masjid, that means you are being rewarded at a high level for your salah, and so on. So if you see masjid haram, that means your salah reward is very high. Yeah? It can also mean, especially if you are from the Ahl Quran, it can mean you'll be leading, uh, you'll become an imam. Yeah? You'll become an imam. Because every masjid follows haram. And so on. So this is more ru'ya sadiqa, a true dream. It's not complex. It's very simple and easy to understand and explain and interpret. Ru'ya saliha, example of Yusuf a.s. He saw أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر. He saw the eleven stars, so the eleven planets, والشمس والقمر and the sun and the moon لي ساجدين frustrating at me. So this is ru'ya saliha. It's true dream. It's a righteous dream, it's an upright dream, it's a good dream, but it's complex. Yeah. 
One other point, Ru'ya Saliha can be about the past. A true dream, all of this can be about the past, can be about the present, can also be about the future. So, past, for example, you see your, you, you have not seen in, in real life, you have not seen your uh, grandparents in real life, but you see your grandparents in the dream. You're meeting them, you're talking to them. That's past. It can be present also. It can be also something about future. You see, you know, you see yourself having a business and you have to don't have that business. You see yourself having children, you're not even married yet. Yeah. What's the wisdom behind all of this past, present and future? The wisdom behind is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows was there with your past. Is there now and he'll be there with you in the future. And he also he knows your past, he knows your present, and he also knows your future. So that way you have Yaqeen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only exists, but he is creating and facilitating this the great matters for you and small matters small matters for you is facilitating it for you because you're taking the utmost legitimate appropriate means Okay. We'll go through some verses and eventually some ahadith and eventually some examples inshallah on this side. So here I just laid out sort of an introduction. Now I'm going to go in a bit more detail on this side inshallah. Again, overall this is just an introduction. Even the three classes I'll be doing, still it's an introduction. It's a huge science. It's like any other Islamic science, they're huge. And it takes a while before you can be good at it and eventually expert at it. With my, with a person with myself, it took me roughly 15 years to to be where I am now. So it's, it's, it's it, like every science, you need to uh, give your whole heart to it. Dreams are glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? Let's take some examples. Surah Anfal, verse 43 and 44. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, qalila. Allah showed you enemy few in number. A'i in the dream. Prophet saw the armies of the enemies in the dream few in number. But in reality, they are much more bigger in number, in Badr, and obviously in Uhud also. So if Prophet Islam knew the actual number, before he prepared and readied himself, then maybe he would have not gone out to fight or meet them to fight. And Allah SWT knew this. And thereby he gave glad tiding of the victory through showing few in numbers of the enemy. Numbers of the enemy to be few. So Salah you can see from this, from this verse that Salah was a human being. He 
he had concerns. He, had, he was evaluating the risks and loss of life. So here, this dream came as a glad tiding of victory by making the numbers few. So it was feasible for Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, you know what, we can win this battle. Even though there was, the number was generally bigger than uh, our numbers, but we can do it, we can win, we can defeat them, we can beat them. But in reality, when he went and saw the number face to face, it was bigger. The number was more larger. But this is not face Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had tawakun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he saw the dream as a glad tiding. You see? He saw the dream because he knew that dream was from who? Allah. So if Allah showed me the number less than the reality, that means, that means what? He's guaranteeing me victory. Is that clear? So Salah Islam interpreted it that way. Thereby, that, thereby he had certainty of victory in Badr. And even they, when they met with one another, the Sahaba saw the enemy few in number. In reality also, when they met, when they came physical, physical face to face, not, in, not before the battle, during the battle. So when they're battling, they saw the numbers few as well. All, also, all of this to, glad, to give glad tidings of the victory and to boost and to encourage them to fight. Why? Because psychologically and mentally, Emotionally, they have been tortured for for good fifteen years. They have been tortured, tortured, tortured for good fifteen years. Some of them were killed, brutally. So emotionally, psychologically, they have been drained. They have been drained. They have been scarred. They have been wounded. So it's fear upon fear. It's fear upon fear. Layers of fear they had to overcome in battle of Badr. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, was in Badr, generally was more than the help in any other battles after, thereafter. Why? Because of the layers of fears they had individually and collectively. Next point, Allah gives a little knowledge of feeling of a dream's interpretation. So the one who actually sees the dream, they themselves have a little feeling, a little inclination of the dream interpretation. A little. They might not know the details of the interpretation, the complete, perfect outcome like the expert, but they will have some kind of inclination and feeling towards the message, the overall message of the dream. So for example, Yusuf al Islam, he was a young boy. When he went to his father and said, Yeah, but I saw ten, sorry, I saw eleven planets and the sun and the moon prostrating at me. The reply Yaqub al-Islam gave to Yusuf suggests that Yusuf knew some of the interpretation of the dream. The reply his father gave to Yusuf suggests that and the way also and the way Yusuf Islam was narrating the dream suggests that Yusuf Islam knew some of the interpretation of the dream.
Also, if you look at all the prophets, when the first dream came, they knew the interpretation. So that shows what whoever sees the dream, they know at least some of the interpretation. So, for example, Yusuf, the way he described the dream, he said, Oh, my first, he went to his father. Why did he, does he go to his father and say this dream? That means he knows this dream as an interpretation. This dream as a reality. This dream is meaningful. That's why he's going to his father. But his father didn't ask him, did you see a dream? He went to his father. And then the way he described the dream, I saw 11 planets, the sun and the moon. So he's splitting them up. Eleven are his brothers. Sun and the moon are his parents. So he's splitting them. So that he knew some of the interpretation. And then Yaqub Islam said to him in reply, O my son, do not narrate this dream to your brothers. Meaning, sun and the moon will not be jealous of you. I, the parents, will not be jealous of you. But your brothers will be jealous of you from knowing this dream. Why? They will know the interpretation of the dream. Okay. And also, Yaqub Islam ends this this it's a conversation with Yusuf Islam by saying, وَكَذَلِكَ اِسْتَبِيكَ And your Rabb will choose you, or has chosen you. And he will teach you the ends of the matters, the objectives of the matters. And he will complete the favor upon you, as he has completed the favor, favor upon Ali Yaqub, the lineage of Yaqub Islam. Uh, and as he has completed the favor upon your two fathers before you, who is Ibrahim and Isaac alayhi salam, inna rabbak alimun hakim. Now here, Yaqub al-Islam is saying that because you saw this nubuwa dream, Allah will teach you the interpretation therein. In other words, if you are the subject of seeing a true dream, Allah will teach you some level of interpretation of the true dream. Is that clear? Do you understand the point I just made? In other words, if you see a true dream, Allah will teach you a level of interpretation of that true dream. You will know something of that message. Because Yaqul Islam is saying, Allah will teach you. I was the point of Allah giving you a true dream and you don't, you don't know the way it means. There's no wisdom behind that. So you will know some. You might not know the details of it, but you'll know some. Okay. That's why it's important for the uh, the one who sees the dream to give the context because only they know the context unless you give your context to the dream interpreter he will not be able to interpret it for you you have to give your context a lot of times people just say Sheikh I saw this dream what does it mean no it doesn't work like that if someone just simply answers us Sheikh I saw this dream what does it mean it doesn't work like that why because that same dream can mean something different to another individual who's in different context so the context is vital without the context you can't interpret it the, the, just like a, a person comes to you for advice you can't advise him unless you know her context or his context the context will dictate the options the, the specific options they take the specific steps they take the specific advice you give the detailed advice you give
Dream interpretation is a science. It has levels of istiyad and fatwa. Now, because the dream is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be it saliha, sadiqa, bushra, indar, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is within the science of al-Islam. Meaning no one should speak regarding its interpretation except the experts, the rain. It is at the level of istihad and fatwa, or fatwa and istihad. You should not be giving fatwa unless you're expert. You should not be doing istihad unless you're expert. In that particular field, in that particular science. So you go in and ask anyone and everyone, just like if you have a medical issue, you don't go and ask anyone and everyone. You ask the experts. Just like that, you don't go and ask dream interpretation to anyone and everyone. And there's a danger will, will come, come to, it, to it, inshallah, that when you ask anyone and everyone, and wherever they interpret, it might even take place, even if they are not the experts. So that's the danger. Where do we where where did we deduct that is istihad and is fatwa? Firstly, as we said, it's a it's a science. You have to study this science. There's a pattern to it. Secondly, Yusuf al-Islam is the only one in the Qur'an that interpreted dreams in a detailed, explicit manner. And his whole life was interpreted practically due to the dream he saw. So Surah Yusuf is, is filled with gems of dream interpretation. Rather, many of the people of the past took Surah Yusuf as one of the main surahs to learn the science of dream interpretation. So, because his whole life is manifesting of the dream that he saw. Because his whole life was a manifestation, I come into reality of the dream that he saw. So that his whole life was interpretation of the dream. So thereby you can take his whole life as a science to study, to understand the dream world. Because the dream world manifested upon his life. Is that clear? The dream world manifested upon his life. Oh yeah. So Yisrael Islam made a very clear. He's an expert dream interpreter, just like all the prophets. So he made a very clear is fatwa. I, you need to be an expert at the level of ishtihad for it for you to interpret. So whatever you interpret, it will become fatwa. It will be legally. Islamically, legally binding for the individual who comes and asks for the interpretation. They can go to another expert who's senior, but if there's no other expert senior than him or her, then this fatwa becomes binding. They need to listen to it. Clear? So that's the benefit of fatwa. You're going to ask, you're asking the Mufti and the Mufti is giving you the fatwa on the dream. Can't be anyone and everyone. So for example, he says, Ya sahib as-sijni amma ahadukuma fasqi rabbahu khamra Oh, companion, my companion of the prison, one of you, will pour wine 
for his master. As for the other, it doesn't specify which one. Obviously, they know, according to the dreams they have told him, they know who is who. But he's generalizing it. He's being, he's being diplomatic. He's not trying to say, I am, I am dictating this. Rather, he's saying, this is, this is the reality. As for the other, he will be uh, killed. You can say crucified. Crucifixion doesn't necessarily mean crucifixion like the, the West has depicted it. It can simply mean uh, the head being removed from the body. فَتَأْكُلُ الطَّيْرُ مِنْ رَأْسِهِ And the birds will eat from his head. Again, he doesn't say your head, his head. And then he ends up by saying قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ الَّذِي فِيهِ تَسْتَفْتِيَانِ فَطْوَى Okay? So here he uses the word فَطْوَى So the matter has been sealed of what you are seeking fatwa of. It says fatwa, meaning you have to ask experts who can give you the fatwa. Also, the verses continue. If you go to Surah Yusuf, the verses continue and then again the word fatwa is used. يا أيها الملأ أفتوني في رؤيا يا بس 43 يا أيها الملأ the kings asks about his 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 Eli he says he says to to them أفتوني give me the fatwa so again Allah سبحانه وتعالى uses the word fatwa many experts you have to be at the level of experts for you to give the fatwa why specifically fatwa? Because it will differ from person to person depending on the context. There you go. So why was the term fatwa used? Because it will differ from same dream. Two people can see. But it will differ from person to person because of their context. That's why it's fatwa. So if someone... Someone you say the dream to, and they say this is the interpretation. No, no expert will just say this is the interpretation. They will say who is the dream, who saw the dream, what are the context. They'll ask questions to know the context, to know what they're going through, and according to what they're going through, there is the message from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's why I keep repeating: this is a science. Okay, so it's a fatwa, you cannot ask except the experts. <clears throat> Next, dreams are interpreted according to the relevant languages, cultures, including their colors and symbols. So dreams are interpreted according to the relevant languages. So if in the dream words are spoken, the specific language that was spoken in the dream will play a role in interpretation of the dream. If there were specific colors that represent the specific culture, then this will play a role in the dream. If there are specific symbolism in a specific culture, then that also will play a role in interpreting the dream.
So, for example, in Surah Yusuf, you find that through his life story, you find some of these symbol, some of these symbols. Yeah. Some of the symbols in the culture that was used as interpretation. Yeah. So Yusuf Islam's clothes, for example. Now you can take clothes. Clothes, you can generalize it because everyone wears clothes. You can generalize clothes as what? A status. You can generalize clothes as uh, power. You can generalize clothes to mean uh, deeds. So, for example, if you see clothes being torn, if someone sees uh, their clothes being torn oh yeah, from the say from the back like Yusuf Islam his clothes is torn from the back for example you see, you see they see the clothes from torn from the back yeah so that can represent someone is trying to Harm the status, harm the good deeds, harm the character. But if they see clothes from the front, for example, is being torn, then they are harming the status and the character. Okay. And there's so much, and as I said, it's a it's an ocean of knowledge. So much you can learn from Yusuf Al Islam's uh, life story. So, it was, why was clothes important for Yusuf al Islam? Because every stage of his clothes was different. When he was a young boy, his clothes was clothes of modest Muslim prophet's son. When he became slave, his clothes changed. When he was in prison, his clothes changed. When he came out from prison, he became... Amir, his clothes changed, and so on. So the culture dictated the clothes, changing of clothes. Each of these clothes dictated his position, his authority, his power, his class, where he was in the rank of the society, of the social society. Yeah? So these these are cultural symbolism. So for example, I'll give you a more specific example. You see a person wearing longi in the dream. Culturally, in Bangladesh culture, longi symbolizes what? A couple of things. It can symbolize relaxation. It can symbolize poverty also. Yeah? You never wear longi in your life. You see someone in your, in your dream, you're wearing longi. So you can mean you, 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 you mashallah, you retire, you'll be relaxing with lots of money, or you'll go the opposite, poverty. Yeah? Again, it depends on other things in the dream. So if it's, lot of, if it's big house, you know, the house you live, you see yourself in big house, then it's going, you're going upwards, relaxing. But if you see the house was dark, smaller, yeah, then it's, you're going down. I'm just giving an example. So the cultural clothes makes an impact. So here from that, this was some clothes, you can interpret so much. Status, power, poverty, wealth, and so on. Also, the words that was used in Yusuf Islam. Yeah? The words that was used.
to describe things. So, for example, they came, they, uh, they bought him with cheap price. So, the word cheap, Rahima, uh, coins, silver coins, Ma'aduda, it was limited uh, coins, and it was cheap. They bought him cheap. Descriptions. So in the dream, you're looking for descriptions. What were the descriptions? So when you look at the descriptions of things, describe me the color. Describe me how the tree looked. Was it dead or was it alive? Describe me the color of the tree. Describe me the color of the room. Descriptions. That will give you the interpretation of the dream as well. Assist you. Similarly, they came to him crying at night. Description, describing something very specific. Yeah. So more detailed descriptions, the more you can help yourself in the interpretation of the dream. You find in Surah Yusuf descriptions. Detailed descriptions. Similarly, the castle Malik, the cup of the king. You find this issue with the Cultural symbolism. It defines authority, it defines position. For example, you see yourself sitting on a king's throne. Yeah? It's different than seeing yourself sitting on a, a conference or a wedding throne, for example. Yeah? So if you see yourself sitting on the king's throne, the interpretation is what? The interpretation can be you're going to get a promotion in position and power. But if you see yourself sitting on a marriage throne, then you'll see the interpretation is what? You're either going to get married you're going to have, or you're going to either going to have children. Yeah? Anything that necessitates from the marriage. Okay? So these are... There's so much, brothers. There's so much. We can guess, give, give examples from Surah Yusuf. It's unlimited. Yeah? An, ex an expert can never be certain of the interpretation until it has manifested. So Yusuf Islam didn't know, even though he was an expert dream interpreter, he did not know the details of the manifestation of the dreams. He knew that everything would be fine at the end. He knew he, his status and rank and authority would be above his, his, his family. He knew that. But the how, he didn't know. And that's why at the end he said, وَقَالَ يَا بَتِي هَذَا تَأْوِينِ الرُؤْيَا يَمِنْ قَبْلِ Oh my father, this is the interpretation of the dream that I saw before. قَدْ جَعَلَهَا رَبِّي حَقَّ My Rabb has made this interpretation true. Or my Rabb has made the dream reality. So Yusuf was 100, 200, and so here, if you saw somebody didn't know how the interpretation will be executed, obviously uh, the extreme experts will not know. That's a lot of times you find people when they ask me dream interpretation, I interpret it for them. I interpret it very generally. I say it's a glad tiding. Do what you're doing and keep continuing what you're doing. They're like, Ashaykh, what does it mean? I'm like, that's the meaning. That is the meaning. The details no one knows. No one knows how it's going to manifest. 
You ask me to say to you A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I don't know that. You don't know that. No one knows that. Not even the angels know that. Know that. But people, when they ask, because they, they, they think you're an expert dream interpreter, which inshallah, the, the ummah has expert dream interpreters. But the experts will not know A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They will not know that. They will only know it's a good dream and the outcome of the good dream. Yeah, whether you'll be rewarded or you'll have a rank or you'll have a status or you have a position or your risk will increase or you'll get married or you'll have children they'll know the outcome but how are you going to get it? they don't know the how so no expert we know the how and if they tell you the how A, B, C, D, E, F, G they always say they're lying yeah The more severe and lonely the trials, the more true the dreams, dreams shown will be. This is amazing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from His love, it's from His mercy. The more severe the trials are, the more lonely you are in those trials, the more vivid, explicit and clear the dreams will be. It will not be complex. Because you're lonely, you need the dream interpretation. So you, you, you will know the interpretation of the dream. Yeah? However, if it's complex dream and you're going through severe trials and you're lonely and if it's complex dreams, then it's simply to honor you. How? Because you will go and ask the expert dream interpreter to interpret it for you. And then the expert interpreter will know, mashallah, you're someone who is going through severe lone trial. And your status and rank in the sight of Allah is very high and very lofty. So it's simply for you to be honored amongst the believers. That's when the dream will be complex. So for example, Yusuf al-Islam, he saw the complex dream. He knew some of the interpretation, but yet he didn't know the full. So he went to his father. By him letting his father know, now Yaqub al-Islam knows from his sons, Yusuf will be the greatest. So it's to honor Yusuf. But he also knew that he'll go through severe trials. Where did Yaqul Islam where, where did Yaqul Islam deduct that he'll go through severe trials? How did he deduct it from the dream? Firstly, the sky and the earth. The sky and the earth, when they split asunder, it was severe. It was no easy thing. The earth and the stars and planets, planets all of that, they, 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 they were created in a complex manner. And then for them, all of them to prostrate shows that they either did something wrong or either Yusuf had to go through so much to elevate his status above all of them. So Yaqub yeah, deducted from all of this that Yusuf will go through severe trial. What did he deduct from that the brothers will be jealous of him? And the sun and the moon will know? Because the sun and the moon, they benefit the human beings. As for the 11 planets, they do not benefit the human beings. So for them to prostrate to him as brothers shows that they will have some kind of jealousy and enmity towards him. With sun and the moon, that will not be the case. Because they benefit the human beings. Yeah? So these are the deductions Yaqub Islam made. So he was a dream interpreter because he's a prophet. I gave example here of Yaqub uh, sorry, Ibrahim Islam. Seeing in his dream, in Araf al Manami Anni Adabahuka Fandur Malatara. I see in my dream, I am what? Sacrificing you. I'm slaughtering you. 
What do you say? What do you, what do you think? Now, Ibrahim Islam used the word manam, I see in my sleep. He didn't say, I see true dream. He said, I see in my sleep. Why? Because prophets, all the dreams are true. So whatever the dream, whatever they dream in their sleep is true. Thereby he did not have to make that distinguish. Us, we have to make that distinguish. In my sleep, I saw a true dream. We can't simply say, in my sleep, I saw a dream. Yeah? Because we can see true dreams and non-true dreams. Ismail Islam replied back, And obviously he saw this dream again and again. And this is affirmed by saying, Ya Buna inni ara, I see continuously. When both of them surrendered to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and Ibrahim Islam was about to slaughter his own son after him having him in old age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him. Ad saddaqta ruya. Your dream has come true. Are you fulfilled what was your dream was telling you? Are you fulfilled the interpretation? <inaudible> this was a severe trial. Yeah, so this dream was not shown to anyone except to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ismail didn't see it. Ismail's mother, Ibrahim alayhi salam's wife didn't see it. It was only Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was alone in this severe trial. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced that by the huge sheep for it to be slaughtered. So here, what was going through Ibrahim al-Islam's mind that he'll be actually slaughtering his son? But that's what's, that, because that is what he was seeing in the dream. He said, Inni adbahuka. I am seeing me slaughtering you. So he's seeing that in the dream. But in reality, that did not take place. In reality, he slaughtered a beautiful, healthy sheep. So what was the slaughtering then? Until the slaughtering, the dream was true. What was the actual slaughtering then? The actual slaughtering was sacrificing his love for Ismail and giving the love to who? Allah. That was the interpretation. That's the interpretation. Clear? So now if you see you're slaughtering your beloved one, what's the interpretation? You're sacrificing them for the sake of Allah. You love Allah over them. Clear? So that's not difficult. That's very easy to interpret. Why? Because this trial was very severe and it was a very lonely trial. So when there's lonely, severe trial, the interpretation is easy. It's very clear, it's very vivid, very explicit. It's very, and it's step by step. Next point. Interpretation can take years or even a lifespan to manifest. For example, Yusuf al-Islam, it took Nearly 40 years or 40 plus years, according to some of us today. The, the Sahaba and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi seeing they will be performing a hajj and they will be shaving their heads and so forth. It took place the second year. It, it, it took place 
two years time Surah Fatih verse 28, 27 28 Surah Fatih is uh, Surah number 40, 48 So Allah subhanahu wa says لَقَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَ رُؤِيَا بِالْحَقِّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the message of Allah the dreams became uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed that the dreams became true you will enter into the Masjid Haram safe and secure you will be shaving your heads and you will be also shortening your hair there will be no fear okay this actually took place two years after they saw the dream that's why when Umar said also Aslam, he said he saw the dream and we also saw the dream we are going to enter so some said, they say this year? Yeah. So the actual manifestation, it can take a lifespan or a couple of years. Okay. With that, inshallah, we'll stop here. I've got two other sections to cover. I'll cover them, inshallah, next Monday and the following Monday. Barakallahu feekum, jazakumullah khair, subhanakallahu bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa wa astaghfirullah bilaik. Any questions, inshallah, we'll take. In dar, the dal. Any other questions? <coughs> it's not instincts. The dream, dream told you. Now you take the you take the precautions. Yahweh Islam did take the precautions, uh, but uh, they promised him. He made he made him promise. He made them promise they will take care of Yusuf Islam. And because they made the promise, he let them go. He let him go. So he took the precaution. Abu Hera. Yeah. We're not at the level of Abu Hera for sure trying to tell us something good. We are not at the level of Abu Hera for sure trying to tell us something good. It depends what the dream is. Yeah, depends what the dream is. But uh, going back to the other one, is is so they grab shaitan. They were not at that level. Okay. Any other question? Of course, we'll end there. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallah. Bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Subhanakallah. Bidak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.